Helen, can I just make some general comments whilst you? Sure, you can. No problem. Okay. Um, a very good afternoon to you, uh, members of the movement, uh, particularly our uh, delegates representing the provinces. And, and of course, a welcome back to uh, all of you that were in the National Council meeting. Um, I just want to, at the outset, um, to, to, to just apologize for the late start. Um, the, the National Council meeting went very, very well, but typically with uh, working on technology platforms where, you know, we got to accommodate everybody um, in terms of their own connectivity and bandwidth issues, uh, it, it, it overran a bit. So we apologize for the late start. Uh, but I'm sure this particular session will actually go uh, much sooner. Um, we are going to discuss uh, some of the rules of engagement in the uh, 18th um, annual general meeting and the elections, particularly the rules for the um, to, to, to verify and validate the ballot as well as the voting procedure. So that will actually be spelled out in a short while. But I wanted to, I just wanted to um, ensure that you, you know, you know that you're in the right place at the moment. And as soon as, as, soon as Helen has um, admitted everyone to this particular conference uh, platform, we will be able to, to start. So uh, my name is Dyer Sudat, I'm your president. And we're also going to give you an opportunity in a few minutes time to, to also put on your video. Um, we may not give you an opportunity to in, go around the, 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 the conference room to introduce everybody, but you're welcome to put on your video for the next few minutes so that uh, if you have not um, met any of the management board members or if the management board members have not met you from the provinces um, that, 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 that would be able to, um, you know, they'd be able to see you. And I think in, in the first instance, when Helen does a roll call, also get an opportunity to uh, put on your video so that everybody knows who's, who's actually speaking. So with that in mind, uh, whilst I'm waiting for Helen, the roll call will allow you to, as I said, introduce yourself as well as to, uh, for you to sign your name in the chat. So you will notice that at the bottom of your screen, um, there is a chat function um, where it says more. Well, that, that's how mine is appearing. If you click on that and you have a chat, um, uh, you click on the chat, you'll be able to type up your name as well. So just so that Helen has a record of the for this particular session, All right? Helen, are we good to go? Sorry, I was mute. Um, we good to go. Okay, I'm gonna ask you then at the beginning, um, I've. I, I probably will welcome you again when I do the report, but um, so, so we're going to deal with the attendance and the register for now. Um, I also would like to announce that at the, at the start of the National Council meeting, we did play a video honoring um, the fallen heroes um, within Life Saving South Africa uh, that had passed on from 2019 into 2020. Um, there were some names added to that. Um, we will ask the head office to also make that video available. Um, Janelle from the head office is also assisting. So we'll make that video available and you will be able to watch that uh, video um, honoring all of the, um, of, of the life safety members who have passed on. Uh, so I'm not gonna repeat that now because we'll adjust and we'll include the names so that you can have that available and you can even share that within your provincial structures or even the club structures. Right, Helen, can I ask you, um, before we actually go into the, 
um, let me see if I'm on the agenda proper, but um, now that I move, so the composition for this particular annual general meeting, could I ask you to just go through a roll call and then uh, participants can actually put their videos on and then um, once we do that, we will accept the attendance register with the apologies. Sure, I will do that. It might not appear as the same as on the um, agenda, but um, just to to be just to note that Matthew Bowman is not in attendance, and he is replaced replaced by Taylor Fullman, and Mike Gamble is not in attendance. He is replaced by Esme Thompson. So if I can just go through um, the list and uh, just ask if you can, when I get to you, that you switch your video on so that everybody can see as you acknowledge that you are present. Dyer. Um, very good afternoon. And um, as your president, once more welcome you to the 18th annual AGM. Alan. Good afternoon, everyone. Okay, uh, Dylan. I um I can't switch my video off now. I'm busy driving. I'll be home soon and switch my video on later. Okay, uh, Winston. Hi, everyone. Okay, Louise. Hi, everybody. Okay, Warren. Uh, I'm here, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, Tracy. Afternoon, everyone. Z. I know that he's got current, he's currently got load shedding. He might be joining us a little later. Bruce. Mz is there. Uh, is Mz there? You do there. Very quiet. Okay, Bruce. Evening, everyone. Craig. Evening, everyone. Okay, if I, I can ask if you can mute yourself if you're not speaking. Uh, Melvin said he would be probably be a few minutes late. Yes. Uh, Marius. Not here Good yet. Evening, ev so good evening, everybody. Okay, Nkosi. Afternoon, everyone. Taylor. Absent. I don't see Taylor yet. No. Yeah, I don't, I don't see Taylor yet. Okay, Kat. Hi, good evening, everyone. Trunel. Hi everyone, I'm here. Anneli? I'm still here. Hello everyone. <laughs> Esme? I'm here. Hello everyone. Troy? Good afternoon, I'm here. Alistair? Leslie? Hi, I'm here. Oh, is Earl there? Yes, he's there. Okay. Thanks, Alice. Earl. Uh, and apologies from Ant Cox, Gerald. Hi, everyone. Eileen. 
Um, I think Irene is struggling to, to get in, uh, uh, Helen. I, I think you must have let her in. I did let her in. She oh, is okay. in. Okay. Um, Jennifer? Hello. Marna? She's can't connect. She's tried, but she can't. Okay. All right. Um, Hi, Helen. Can you hear me? It's Eileen. Yep, we can hear you, Eileen. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Okay, Janelle will be helping as admin. And myself. All right. Um, thank you very much for that, Helen. I think we have then established our roll call. And if you just can just bring up the agenda, um, I will ask for a mover and a seconder for um, the acceptance of the attendance register. And I believe then we would have established that there is participation from all of the provinces, as well as um, uh, management board members. Uh, just hang on one second. Hi, Dyer. Yes, um, uh, Dylan. There are some observers in the meeting as well, so you need to record their attendance as well. Oh. Okay, yes. Um, thank you. I was just trying to look through that. Helen, can you um, just uh, well, confirm? I, I, will, I, will ha I can't confirm because I don't know who they are. They will, if your name has not been called, you will need to introduce yourself. Okay. Can I just ask the observers to please put on your, um, your video and unmute yourself and also introduce yourself so you get to see um, the management board members and the delegates. Um, the rest of you are also allowed to put on your videos so that the members who are guests in the meeting can also see who you are. Uh, I'm trying to toggle around the list of participation, the participants. Um, we have Carrie, Carrie White. Uh, you want to introduce yourself? Good evening, it's actually Tim White. I'm just using oh. Carrie's um, iPad. Okay. Good evening. Welcome, Tim. Good evening. Um, Tim, where are you from? Where, where I'm is from he Durban from? Surf uh, Life Saving Club. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. And um, thank you very much for joining the AGM. Uh, do we have, um, okay. see around here. Uh, are you recognizing any other? Hank Lotz. Hank. Hank, Hank Lotz, yeah. You're welcome to introduce yourself, Hank. I'm just trying to get the screen back. Uh, Hank Lotz, Anderson Toti Surf Life Saving. Welcome, everybody. Okay, I, I hope you caught that. Um, Hank is from the Manson Toti Surf Life Saving Club. Okay. You see, I, mean, I think, I think uh, those are the only two that I have picked up. Helen, I'm also here. It's Heather. Oh, sorry. Apologies, Heather. I did miss you on the bottom of the list. Okay. My sincerest apologies. All right. Um, th thank you very much, uh, Heather, um, for also attending. Um, did, I'm hoping now we've covered all of the attendees um, in the AGM today. So with that in mind, can we then proceed to the next um, item on the agenda? And that is to accept the attendance. Uh, Helen, could you just repeat the, um, the, 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 the name changes of uh, representatives that you had captured on the agenda? Okay. Um, Matthew Bowman is replaced by Taylor Foreman as the Athletes Committee representative. Taylor was not on when we did the roll call. When she comes in, I will let you know. Um, the 
Other replacement was Mike Gamble tendered his apologies and he was replaced by Esme Thompson from Karting Provincial Life Saving Association. Thank you very much for that. Um, you, you, as, and you also mentioned that uh, Janelle from the head office, the and office Janelle. manager is assisting with the um, uh, with, with, with managing the minutes as well as the voting procedure. We, we are going to go into an explanation of the voting procedure, um, but uh, the management board meeting in the course of this week, when it looked at uh, how we managed the electronic ballot as well as the electronic voting procedure, had agreed to include um, the head office manager, Janelle, uh, Naidu, as well as um, Helen, to assist in that process. Okay, and we will have uh, an explanation of that in a short while. But for now, under item number two, can I have a mover and a second for the acceptance of the attendance register? Helen. Helen proposes. Uh, and Z, you're at the bottom of the of the barrel there. Okay, so Helen, you've got that. Um, I think, um, do you also need a, a, a unanimous vote on acceptance or can we proceed with the acceptance of the agenda, uh, of the red register? I think we've got item 2.2 .2 to accept the accreditation of the observers as well. Yes. Um, would we also have a mover and a seconder for the acceptance of the uh, observers? Craig, Bruce. Bruce. Okay. Try. Okay. Okay. Craig, I'm. I'm just checking. You had your hand up. Was that for uh, uh, something that you want to discuss, or was that just? Uh, yes. I just. I just thought that um, Leslie was going to be assisting with the the ballot of the votes. Yes, she is. We're going to go through. Yeah. That. Okay. No. No. It's yeah. Just that he said yourself and Janelle. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, but we, as soon as Helen explains the voting procedure again, then I'm going to also ask for that acceptance as well. Um, can we then move uh, at this stage into the explanation of the voting procedure? Um, yeah, can I ask you to, to do that at this stage, Helen? Okay, a little bit different to the earlier. Um, we would like to have only one provincial person voting. So if we can ask that the second provincial person does not vote. Uh, if you can, please, in the chat stream, please um, nominate who is going to be the person from your province who will be voting this evening. Okay, just a little bit of um, uh, background as well before we, we again confirm that. As you know, um, the, the, we, we are running an AGM on a virtual platform, unlike what we would do in a physical meeting. And in the National Council meeting earlier on, it was accepted that uh, in principle that we accept the um, procedure as it will happen in terms of the tools that are available on this particular platform. So the principle of actually running the meeting um, was, was accepted just as the whole world is moving uh, in that direction. Um, it was also accepted in principle, we like ILS um, has already moved onto um, the virtual platforms and have already incorporated that into their constitution that we accept in principle the, 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 the process to actually, um, one, convene the meeting on a virtual platform and also to administer the ballot and the voting procedures on the available tools that are available. So Helen was telling you that in the actual uh, Zoom platform, um, there is a chat uh, process, uh, there is a chat function and uh, there is a functionality to actually send the vote directly to Helen. Um, there's two types of votes. One is a vote that is 
this is open ballot where you simply type in whether you accept or not. And the second one is a secret ballot where you would then send your vote. And in this case, to the um, admin persons that are also, um, or the electoral uh, uh, persons that are assisting us, and that is Helen Janelle and Leslie Lunn. So I hope I've summarized that, but Helen, you can just also just yes. refer if I've not. Yeah. When it comes to voting this evening, please copy in Janelle and Leslie Lunn um, when it is a secret ballot. Not, you do not have to copy me in. Um, Janelle and Leslie will be counting the ballots for this evening. Uh, when it comes to a general vote, it will be via the chat line. So I have got, just to confirm for you, um, Gert now will be voting for Free State, Jennifer Taylor for Northwest, Alistair Bond for KZN, Anneli Lawrence for Gauteng Province. Um, who's voting for Eastern Cape? It would be a I'm, the, I'm, the only, I'm the only one here from Eastern Cape Island. Okay, can you please just log that via the chat line for us? Will we'll do. Thank you. And then just so that everybody is aware, I have shared the screen, but here is the voting, the participation, so that you know that we have a quorum. Um, of the 17 voting members, all 17 are present. All right, I, I, Helen's moved us to this next item that I want to go to, but thank you for that. And this would then constitute the voting strength for today's meeting. And on the spreadsheet that you um, should be able to see is be the, um, uh, the, would be the breakdown per province, as well as a breakdown per management uh, board members. Okay. Can I then ask for a mover, a seconder? Warren, I see your hand is raised. You, you wanted to ask something? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, Helen called out all, all the provinces except Western Cape. Oh. I okay. apologize, Western, thank you. Western Cape, Eileen will vote for Western Cape. Okay, um, then can I just go back to uh, the voting oh. then? We can't hear you. Um, Helen, I've can you hear me? Yes. I was, okay. I, was I can hear you. Mzi, we can't hear you. We, we can't hear, hear Mzi. Um, I will give him. I will give him a call. He must lock in. Uh, lock out and lock in again. Okay. I'm, I'm hoping this point is not directly related to what I was wanting to do and just confirm the voting strength. Um, so, so do we wait for you to call him or can we proceed with accepting the, the voting strength for the meeting? Uh, go on, uh, I will speak to him there. Okay, thank you very much. Can I Daya, have a uh, Daya, Marius here. Um, yes. Zia has sent on the chat group, he has sent his question, who do we send our votes to? That was his question. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so, so I think Helen had confirmed that the, the, the open, the, there's, a, there's a facility for the open vote on the chat yes. forum. But for any secret ballot vote, it will go to Janelle and to Leslie Lam. 
So, so um, Helen's also put that as a note to um, directly after the response to MC. So can I confirm that you've actually seen that? Uh, is there somebody that needs an explanation as to how that is done? Helen, I can I ask you to just explain? Just explain you know how you- are not on it. It's under LSA co-host. Okay, I'm just gonna ask Helen to just reiterate how those uh, secret ballot votes will actually go to Janelle and Leslie. Okay, um, I have shared my chat stream to, with you on the screen. Can everybody see it? Not yet. No. Let me just share it again. Uh, oh. uh, I've spoken to Z. You will log out and log in again, Helen. Okay. All right. Okay. No problem. Um, my chat stream disappeared. Just hang on. Okay. Can everybody see my chat stream? No. No. Okay. All right. Mm -mm. At the bottom of the chat block, you have a little icon that says two, and next to it is a little gray icon with a drop down box. The default setting on that is to everyone. When it comes to um, secure voting, you will tick Janelle Naidu or Life Saving South Africa head office or and the, you'll have to send it a second time to Leslie Lunn. So you will have to vote twice. Janelle will be recording the votes um, and Leslie will be counting with her to ensure that the votes are correct. When it is a general vote, you will leave the gray portion drop down screen so that everyone can see what the vote is. Okay, Janelle's username, I will change it. Um, it was head office, LSA head office, but I will change that to Janelle. Any questions? Okay, I, I hope you pick that up, yeah. Go, okay, you go, Helen. Okay, everybody's names are there. Um, all right, I can, let me just see if I can set the hosts only. You can, can speak to the hosts only. So I've made Janelle a co-host and um, I will make Leslie a co-host. Just hang on. Okay. Um, Daya, you can continue because we need to accept the attendance register. And that is a, yes. that is a general is, vote. Yeah, we, we have accepted the attendance register as well as the observers. Uh, we are now at the point of accepting the, um, the, we, the vote. Yeah, we haven't accepted it by a vote. So it hasn't been carried. Yes, yes. Um, that's what I'm asking for. Did we get the uh, uh, proposal and, and seconder for the voting strength as yet? Did you? Can, can I ask for a proposal and a seconder for the voting strength? I will propose. Melvin. Okay. Uh, you, you, uh, Winston proposes, Melvin uh, seconds. And then could you, in the general chat, if... Um, if, if there's no objections, you can just type in accept and then enter key. So Helen will actually record that. Okay. okay have you got that then, Helen? Yeah. Right. So um, I think then we've covered item 3.4 and 
item 3.5. Um, do you want a separate um, except yes, for the quorum? Yes, please. Okay, for item 3.4, I do believe we are quorate um, in terms of representation from all of the provinces as well as for the management board. Um, we have a full representation. Can I have a mover and a seconder for item 3.4 on the, the item list as quorum? Alan. Alan, Alan. Alan proposes and did I hear a seconder? Anneli. Oh, Anneli seconds. Uh, and then in your, um, in your chat section, um, if, if there's no objections, could you please type in your accept there? 3.4. Right. Then can we then, so we've dealt dispense with item 3.5. Okay. We, can we then move on to item 4, 4.1, the notice convening the annual general meeting for the 5th September was circulated on 7th of July and to declare that the notice convening this meeting, um, which is an open session, is in order. Can I get a mover and a seconder for that? Troy Brown. Um, I'm second. Warren. Okay, Warren seconds who, who uh, moved? Melvin. I will move. Eileen Fortain moves. Eileen Fortain moves. Okay, thank you very much Warren seconds okay um, and then you could um, accept um, in the chat column as well right. um, Helen I'm, I'm seeing your screen very small so I'm just toggling so the confirmation item 5 5.1 is the minutes of the 17th annual general meeting of the National Council held on 27th of July 2019 was circulated on the 27th of August, 2019. So 5.1 is to ratify as a true record with or without amendment and to adopt the minutes of the 17th annual general meeting. Uh, can we have a mover and a seconder for that? Alan. Second. Earl. Earl moves, can I get a seconder? Alan said his name. Dialing seconds. So can we then have your acceptance in the chat line at the bottom in the chat section? Right. Um, we then move on to um, the general report, item number six, general report of the president. Um, Helen, can I ask you to um, present to the um, AGM uh, the slideshow that I prepared for general report? Uh, I think it's better if you share it from your side and I'll run through that item very, very quickly. I don't know. Sure. Um, I don't have a, oh, sorry. I've only got a, a, a written report. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Can, can, can you give me a sharing right to see if I can call this up again? Um, you have sharing rights. I'll stop sharing and then you can share. Okay. Um, are you able to see a slideshow, a PowerPoint slideshow on your side? Yes. Oh, great. Great. Thank you. Then at least it'll help me to share from my side. Um, thank you very much. Um,
try to get the full screen. Um, All right, um, I'm just gonna go through this um, with you. So once again, um, to members of the movement, um, our guests, we don't have any special guests today, but uh, you're all welcome and my greetings to you. Uh, no, no, none of the, our annual reports will be complete without any reference to the COVID-19 pandemic and the effects that we had. Um, we were severely impacted at the tail end of the year under review, the 2019-2020, but it certainly impact. And the biggest impact was the cancellation of the national champs, which um, was going to take place in March 2020. In fact, the lockdown started, I think, just three or four days before um, our national championships in Port Elizabeth. And unfortunately, we incurred... Uh, uh, quite a bit of losses in terms of that particular event. And we're still dealing with the impacts of that. Um, uh, if it was not for the membership entry fees, um, LSA would have certainly been in the red in terms of our economic situation. There was certainly a recovery of some of our sponsorship uh, and some of our expenditure in terms of the negotiations we had with the with the service providers. And um, thanks to the efforts of the director of sport, as well as the um, Life Saving Eastern Cape LOC, as well as the efforts of our general manager, um, we've managed to at least pull back on some of those losses. Uh, the showcase in 2029 was the uh, World Conference on Drowning Prevention. Um, this was a massive event indeed, and um, these are just some of the pictures from, from the um, World Conference on Drowning Prevention. Um, I just want to focus your attention on one of the figures right in the middle of those five people in the front, uh, Gemma May in the black jacket right in the center. Um, she's she's a, a UN representative. She comes from RNLI. And at the World Conference on Drowning Prevention, um, there was a mandate given on the uh, lobbying and advocacy for a UN declaration on drowning. And she's actually leading that. She was a keynote speaker at the conference, but she's leading this at the, at the United Nations. There was some development of this earlier in the year, uh, around January, February, but like everything, the pandemic the COVID-19 pan pandemic just put the brakes on that kind of development, but we will follow up on that. So, um, uh, Helen, I think Taylor is in the waiting room. Maybe you can uh, see if you can admit her. Um, this particular uh, World Conference is a, is a biennial event. We hosted the 2019 WCDP on 8 to the 10th of October. It was a culmination of over two years of hard work by the local organizing committee and our partners. Um, we, we successfully had over 650 international delegates from 70 nations. It was quite an extensive program of oral presentations, poster presentations, uh, workshops, as well as a trade show. Um, the, the mayoral welcome and the gala event um, certainly was, was, was enjoyed by all of the delegates. And, and um, from the feedback that we got, it's one of the better organized conferences. I've been to quite a few of these over the years and I can, you know, not being biased, but I really believe that it was uh, a well-organized conference at the Durban ICC. The conference itself was preceded by pre-conference workshops uh, that accommodated the ILS Chancellery, the ILS Board of Directors, and the various, various ILS commission meetings. And then um, a week before the, the conference itself, and in the, in the last few days of September into the first couple of days of, uh, of October, uh, we also hosted the International Surf Rescue Challenge um, that was um, saw participation by six nations. Uh, so this was a platform for, the, the, the conference served as a platform for the formation of the Drowning Prevention Alliance which is something that we are working on. And I mentioned 
the, 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 the moves to actually get a UN declaration of drowning, which is still work in progress. Um, so, so and, and, and it also um, was well supported by the case in uh, sport and recreation, as well as the Itikweni municipality and a host of other sponsors. Um, right, so the drowning prevention program within uh, Life Saving South Africa, and you'll get details about this in the annual report. Um, it's been growing. Um, in 2019, 2020, we had reached out to 30,000 learners. And over the last three years, this is like made up one third of the total that we have reached out since the inception of the program. There's been strengthening in the development of partnerships with the KZN Department of Education. And a number of workshops was planned, but at least the director drowning prevention had in fact uh, managed to roll out the train the trainer program. So the 2020 rollout unfortunately got affected by the lockdown measures. Um, there were presentations made to the Gauteng uh, Department of Education and that hasn't really taken off again because of the lockdown uh, measures. Um, the Suminati program in the last year reached out to 12,000 learners, and that's certainly seen an increase. Our partnership with the Princess Charlene of Monaco Foundation had de delivered on various projects in 2019. And although they were, um, uh, the lockdown and the pandemic had put the brakes on further um, delivery, uh, there's been meetings in the last couple of weeks because they have seen new leadership and new board members on their structure. And Helen and I, in the last couple of weeks, we have a second meeting scheduled for Monday. Okay, so the Drowning Prevention Commission has been growing stronger and stronger. And we certainly, from the meeting that happened earlier, urge all provinces and clubs to engage with the comprehensive strategy that has been developed. So, so a strategic uh, um, uh, uh, planning document has been circulated and you will, you will see the kind of um, directions and objectives that the DPC is aiming towards. In terms of the sport and championships, I've, I've mentioned the, the international surf rescue. Um, our national water, open water champs uh, did convene in March in the Northwest province. Uh, then, of course, unfortunately, the cancellation of a number of national events. So the pause button was, was pressed in terms of the growth trend at nationals. And if all goes well for competitions in 2021, we hope to actually build on the, on, on, on the increasing number of participants at our national trends. Um, the, you will see in this director of sport um, uh, report, that there is a new athletes commission um, that has been established. And we have the representative Taylor Foreman, which, who I think has just joined us as well. Although we lost the, one of our national sponsors, General Tyre, uh, Wimpy has come on board and we're working towards development, uh, developing that relationship. Um, there's certainly been a, a, a interest generated amongst a number of smaller sponsors as well. And this, this has been around the excitement with the uh, BOTIS events that take place in the national, um, uh, and the national champs. And the Sports Commission is certainly looking at how they can actually build on that interest as well. So we, we do believe that there's been huge marketing and media coverage generated, um, uh, generated through the national championships. And, and that has been very encouraging. In terms of the life-saving education, training, and development, um, there has been a series of meetings and workshops um, that have taken place. Uh, they have intended to revisit the standards in qualitative matters. Um, there's a, a, a COVID has also prompted us to actually uh, develop an online courses, and we will look forward to that being um, that being. Um, uh, uh, rolled out um, in, in, in the last quarter of this year, as well as moving forward, because that's becoming the new norm. Um, I'm just seeing somebody else that's entering in the waiting room. Helen, you can look at that. So there's been a significant number of examinations 
um, that have, have actually taken place in the year under review of that 1,100 new lifeguard awards, uh, 2,600 retests. Um, there's a little bit of concern of the number of new examiners uh, that has been um, uh, passed out, but uh, I'm sure the Life Saving Advisory Board Wood Head Office is working on that. Um, and as I said, the whole shift during the lockdown was to now look at how we deal with the safety measures and um, uh, comply with government regulations uh, moving into return to duties in the last quarter of 2020. In terms of the membership, uh, we have a figure of 7,823 members. Uh, over 50% of those are senior lifeguards. Um, there's been module increases in 2018 to 2019 and 2019 to 2020. Um, female membership has been an area of concern and will certainly be a focus of growth as we move forward. Um, in 2019, there was a series of roadshows that the management board undertook to all of the provinces and those were successfully run and they'll be incorporated in some of the reports in the actual annual report. Um, the management board was very, very encouraged to actually engage with um, provincial leadership. And uh, even though we may not be able to do that um, in, 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 in what's left in 2020, but the virtual plaf platforms should be able to allow us to, 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 to reach out to the provincial leadership um, as the new leaderships come into power. Um, during the, the, the early days of the lockdown, the management board had engaged with the provincial chairpersons, particularly dealing with the, with the national champs, as well as dealing with the financial situation. Um, but what we picked up was there was certainly a, a commitment and hard work that was picked up from the provinces and clubs. And for that, the management board is very, very um, encouraged, okay? In terms of the patrols and duty hours, we emphasize this in the national, um, in the national council meeting, but it's worthwhile actually repeating that, um, that of the uh, duty hours that were recorded for 20, the 2019 and 2020 um, year under review, um, that the, the, the numbers of 1,000, um, 126,760 um, duty hours being recorded. We sometimes being, uh, we feel that that's often understated whenever there's duty reports that doesn't reach the head office. Um, if we had to translate that into a RAND value uh, contribution, then, then that would translate to just under 25 million, um, million RANDs uh, that have been contributed, had municipalities, the hospitality industry, as well as the uh, tourism industry had they had to pay for that. Um, but we also want to emphasize and reiterate that we believe that that figure, although we haven't done the actual studies, but we believe that that figure could actually double to over 50 million Rand co um, contribution um, if one had to factor in the number of hours that it had taken for instruction, for training, for inspection, for quality assurance in terms of uh, inspecting duties. Um, this particular meeting, um, you know, if, if, if we had to calculate the number of hours that, that members of the movement had spent, uh, we haven't even factored that. But if we had to add that in, we, we certainly believe that the RAND value contribution would be well over uh, 50 million, okay? So I think, you know, that's something that we need to applaud ourselves because very often we don't value our own contribution. And because we don't value our own contribution, uh, government, um, our communities, our society, um, the corporate world out there, the municipalities, they, they, they obviously take this for granted. And we need to remind them of the massive contribution we make to our nation. Um, there's been over 2,500 rescues and over 5,000 first aid uh, rend uh, rendered. And if you look at the history of the organization, 
the rescues have topped well over 130,000 in, in, in the 100 plus years that, uh, that Life Saving South Africa has been rendering the service. Um, we've also been trying to work very closely with local authorities to stamp out qualification fraud. And in recent months, Helen's uh, meeting schedule has now begun to ramp up as we're looking towards going towards opening of beaches, opening of pools, um, opening up of water parks. Okay? But the focus is always going to be on maintaining um, the highest standards. Okay? In terms of transformation and development, we know this will always be a challenge. We've recently seen the Eminent Persons Group, the EPG, have released its report to uh, the Minister of uh, Sport, as well as to SASCOP. Uh, a number of um, uh, big federations have come into the spotlight, uh, Cricket South Africa, um, uh, uh, Swimming South Africa, and other codes have come into the sport spotlight. Um, our turn will certainly come because the Eminent Persons Group, they look at this in batches in terms of what were the transformation targets that the federations have set and then how they can audit that and arrive at their evaluation. But currently, um, of our membership um, uh, 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 group, 31%, um, one, th one third of that is female members, and 39% as black members in the movement. So in terms of our partnership, this is ongoing work in progress. Uh, in recent, I've just, I've just chosen a few of them um, in terms of our engagement, department is now called Department of Sport um, and Arts and Culture. Uh, there's been lots of engagement during the lockdown, particularly dealing with the government regulations. As each level, as we move down the levels, there's been ongoing uh, engagement with um, uh, Director Generals and uh, Deputy Director Generals. Uh, SASCOC at the moment. Um, often the less said is better because SASCOC has been in the news for all the wrong reasons in terms of the composition of its board, in terms of the um, uh, disciplinary processes, in terms of the uh, suspension of the acting president, and then whether he's still suspended or not suspended, um, in terms of disciplinary hearings that's been uh, announced. So, so there's been lots happening. And there's been ongoing engagement amongst the federations. In the earlier meeting, I, I kind of outlined how that happens. And literally, there's daily meetings from a group of federations dealing with both government in terms of the re regulations, as well as in terms of the ongoings in SASCA. Um, we, we've tried our level base to deal with uh, COCTA and disaster management and SALGA because there's a need to actually engage with them. Um, but Unfortunately, because of the focus on um, the, the safety measures with the pandemic, uh, their focus has also shifted. Uh, but we, we, we are kickstarting those relationships. I mentioned, um, you know, uh, uh, renewed um, engagement with the Department of Education as Princess Charlene of Monaco, and they've been participation with both Royal Life Saving as well as ILS Africa. There's been also engagement with sponsors um, to deal with, um, with, with the fallout of the, the, the cancellation of the national champs. And hopefully we'll bring by expressing um, you know, our extreme appreciation and heartful thanks to, to all of the duty members that go out there over the weekends until, of course, lockdown hit and until they resume duties to the club and provincial administrators, to the general manager and her head office staff have been working extremely hard during the lockdown. Uh, I had in the National Council um, spelt out how we had to deal with first the closure and then uh, the reopening of head office. And then, of course, to the management board members, um, if, if you could only see how the meetings have actually rammed up over the last five months, um, it's amazing that the energy levels from the management board members, as well as the advisory boards um, that have taken place. And then, of course, to all of the directors, um, particularly finance director, sport director, and um, um, 
the, the, the Life Saving Board Director, uh, as well as Drowning Prevention, the work uh, amongst the, 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 the respective committees, and of course, the membership at large. So I think um, I've come to the end of my address to this annual general meeting, and to say thank you for also your participation and listening to me, giving a kind of blow by blow um, uh, account and I wish that the proceedings go well and thank you all as well as the outgoing officials and the best, like to wish the best to the incoming ones as well. And we look forward to an upcoming duty season. Uh, we don't exactly know what's going to transpire, but that's also work in progress in terms of the regulations. And I'm sure we will get the directors via the Life Saving Advisory Board as well as the general manager. And I thank you for your participation. Helen, I've stopped sharing, so I'm, I'm not too sure if there's anybody okay. that would like to, um, uh, you know, like to make any comments um, or raise any questions as far as the uh, address that I've given to you. I'm trying to see if I can pick up on the um, hands. Dylan has a has a hand up. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Dylan. And I see Alan also has his hand up. Uh, uh, Dylan. Yeah. I just want to pass on my thanks to you, Dylan, for leading us and for presenting a report. And I propose that we accept your report. Uh, thank you very much. We have a proposal from from and uh, is there a seconder for that proposal? Oh, oh. Okay. Uh, we have Earl. That, that's, is it Earl? I don't know if it's Earl. I mean, I said second, but Earl also said so, so you can use Earl's name if you want to. Okay. Okay, thank you. We'll, we'll use Earl from the province okay, for, right. for the acceptance of uh, the report that I presented. Um, like I said, we could spend the whole day talking about all of the meetings, but I've just tried to give you a high level summary as far as that is concerned. So thank you very much. And then if you could just also uh, type in your acceptance um, in the uh, general chat, if, uh, if, if uh, Helen wants to see that as well um, yes, for please. item number six. Yes. Yeah. If uh, um, I just need to note, thanks to Marius, he's unfortunately not going to be staying with us any more this evening. Thank you for his attendance. Um, he needs to go and rest. It's been a long day for him. Yes. So, um, thank, we thank note, you, uh, If you will please excuse me. Yes, um, I've noted that, and we had a chat from early this morning. Um, again, um, we 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 thankful that you were you were able to spend um, the entire day with us. So thank you very much, Marius, yeah, and thank you. We will note your 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 ex, your your apology for the rest of the meeting. Okay, thank you, guys. Best right. of luck for you all. Stay safe. Yeah. <clears throat> Great. Dai, my lights are also going off from load shedding, so I'll have to be excused now. Um, I've sent my votes through for the management board through to the two ladies, Janelle and Leslie, and I've sent a general message. Um, where I'm going to vote positively for all the additional items on the agenda, but I must leave now. Thank you very much. Okay, it's noted. Can we also then check as well, because I think we need to check whether we'd still be correlated to the, to the end of the meeting and yes. also how that impacts on the voting stand. Can I do a quick check, particularly with the provinces? Um, are you guys going to be okay to stay with us, the provincial um, mandated uh, representatives? I'm still fine from the LEC. LEC is okay. Uh, Western province, you're going to be fine? Fine. Yes. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Free That's fine. Northwest is fine. Okay. I'm, I think we've covered all of the provinces. And then besides Marius and Bruce, um, if there's any other um, uh, 
management board member or other voting delegate that's going to um, lose uh, connectivity, then please indicate that. All right. Alan, uh, I'll be available, but I see Craig's not on the group and listed as a participant, so you must have been kicked out. Could I ask um, Warren, can you check with Craig? I will do it quickly. Just, I'll give him a call. Okay. I think Whilst he's you're doing a that. Power. Yeah. Whilst you're doing that, can I then ask Helen to give us a, um, an explanation of how um, the membership will be able to uh, access the annual report? I sent a link to everybody this morning, and Janelle has sent a link now. Um, again, once again, where everybody can access the annual report. So you were sent a link to a Google Drive this morning, those people who had confirmed they were in, would be in attendance. So um, you are welcome to access that link to, to find the annual report, either the one to the Google Drive or one to my, um, uh, what's this drive called? OneDrive. All right. So, so can I then ask? Uh, I, I I know some of you may 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 still be, you know, um, uh, trying to access that particular report, but it had been circulated to everybody, and that's going to be again the new norm that we will send these reports out electronically. I do know Helen is going to uh, go through some print order for some of our partners in government and in terms of our sort of statutory requirements. Um, but can I then have a mover and a seconder for the acceptance of the annual report? Um, yes. Accept. Oh. Just so okay. that everybody... Helen's... Just so that okay, everybody... Helen, is... I'll, I'll just hand over to you to just manage this item. Proceed. Okay. Okay, thank you. I'll just quickly show that the item is actually, um, I see what Warren's hand is up. Um, is that about Craig, Warren? Uh, that's correct, yes. He's just going to try. He's got 2% battery left. He did send his votes through to Janelle. Um, he is just going to try and see whether he can link up to the JBL speaker that do have power to maybe come on for a few minutes or so. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, just so that everybody can see, the annual report has been, been produced. Um, it will be available on the, the website as well. So um, please follow the link and um, you will find it. So the report, there is the, the report that Daya has submitted. Uh, so you would have, he, he's given the verbal version of it. There is the report on the, um, from head office's side, as well as lots of pictures, all the, the portfolio directors, um, as well as our annual financial report is in here, our membership statistics and our rescue, rescue statistics, as well as the award winners from last year. So uh, it is available. If you have not received it, or if you, you haven't received the link, please pop Janelle a message and she will send it through to you. Thank you, thank you very much. And then we, because it's the report is an electronic version, um, I think it will be also um, uh, appreciated if members of, uh, of this um, meeting and of the provinces can also circulate this report as widely as possible so that, uh, that all of those highlights and all of the excellent life savings that Africa has been engaged in will be able to um, to, to go out there into the public domain. So we urge you to actually do that as widely as possible. Can I then ask for a, 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 a proposal and a seconder for the acceptance of the annual, um, for the annual general report that uh, Helen had just projected? Helen, I move on it. 
Uh, Alan Moves, can I get a seconder? Seconder. Warren seconds. So thank you. And then I think Helen would just ask you to uh, type out your acceptance of that in the uh, general chat forum. Okay. Under item number seven, there's 7.2. And as you would always appreciate, there's a lot of work that we've got that would have gone in, into the production of this particular report. And central to this would be particularly the head of the staff, uh, Janelle, Helen, and, and a whole host of people, which I, I'm not going to attempt to even um, uh, uh, outline at the moment. Of course, to all the contributors that have, that have made the report possible. So can I also ask for a, a proposal and a seconder to record appreciation to all who made the report possible. Annalise? Yes, Gerald. Annalise uh, moves and Gerald seconds. Yes. Okay. Right. Uh, could we also then ask you to, in the chat, um, also record your uh, acceptance of this particular uh, record of appreciation? Right. Um, Helen, can you? If it's okay with you, can we then move on to the next item? Sure. Right. I'm also looking at my own agenda because my eyesight doesn't allow me to read Helen's. Um, then item number eight. Um, just give me a sec. Yeah. Item number eight, Bravery Awards. Um, 8.1. Ratification of the Bravery Awards as recommended by the Bravery Awards Committee um, to ratify any of the Bravery Awards presented during 2019-2020 as per Bravery Committee annual report. Um, as Z said, there are 26 Bravery Awards being presented. They are all displayed in the annual report. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm hoping you would have got to a point, or Helen, you are projecting. Okay. Let me find them, sorry. You had them It's a there. very long, no, it's a very long report. There. So just from, from um, the Bravery Awards Committee, um, 20 incidents were adjudicated over the past year. Five incidents were excluded from the final awards. Four of the awards were duty squad rescues. 26 heroes are being honored for their efforts. Eight of these are LSA members, five from surf life saving clubs and three from inland clubs. The other 18 or 70% of those being recognized are non-lifeguard, lifesavers. Um, Helen, thank Thank you very much for calling the page. So you can continue, Ellen. Okay. Um, for the first time, two rescues were also part of the incidents adjudicated. One was a mass rescue of youth at Dyer's Beach, Mossel Bay, and the other was a team rescue of a woman trapped in floodwaters in Chwane, Gauteng. Team efforts saved the lives in both incidents. Um, I'm not going to go and read through all of them. Uh, Bravery Awards, just so that you understand, are considered on five levels, with zero being no award. One is a letter of appreciation. Two is a letter of commendation. Three is a certificate of commendation. Four is the silver medallion, which is our highest award for bravery. Um, the Drowning Prevention Awards are on four levels. One being a letter of appreciation. Two, a letter of commendation. Um, Three is the highest award, the Certificate of Accommodation for Preventing Drowning, including extensive CPR. These incidents don't involve any degree of bravery or risk. The, they introduced the recognition awards, um, considered when a qualified lifesaver uses their life-saving skills to render assistance and or save a life in a non-aquatic environment or emergency situation. 
So the Bravery Awards have seven incidents with 12 awards. The Drowning Prevention has nine incidents with 13 awards, and there is one recognition award for one incident. So they are there and, and available for everybody to read, and we will make sure that the certificates, uh, the relevant certificates are um, presented to all recipients. All right, thank you very much for that, Helen. And you just also confirmed, yes, normally we would, we would honor uh, a number of the um, recipients um, in our AGM and in other events. Um, so, so that will have to be worked on because I think it's, uh, it, it, it is an honor indeed to present these uh, awards to the various recipients. So at this stage, can I call for a, a proposal and a seconder to ratify the bravery awards presented during the 2019-2020, as per the committee report. Propose. Um, uh, Winston, seconder. Troy Brown. Troy Brown seconds, thank you very much. And then you put the, the uh, acceptance um, in, in the chat group. Uh, at this stage, can I also then, also from, from, uh, from my position as president, also acknowledge um, the work of the convener of the Bravery Awards Committee, and that is uh, Stanford Slubbard. You saw, saw him um, up in, in, on, on, on the page that Helen had actually projected, as well as the Bravery Awards um, uh, Committee um, that over the years have, have really spent hours and hours of their time doing the due dil diligence, um, checking all of these records. And it's really a painstaking task um, there's been a recent engagement with the Bravery Awards Committee, and I quite like the direction that the Bravery Awards Committee themselves are taking by also reaching out and identifying members of, uh, of the movement, particularly younger members who could be, um, what is the word, um, sort of identified as provincial uh, Bravery Awards Committee so that they can start learning um, the ropes and eventually, um, you know, as Bravery Award Committee members um, retire, that there will actually be a succession plan. So that's, that's a fantastic step in the right direction. So it's, 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 it's developing capacity, it's developing succession planning, but it's also kind of ensuring that, that uh, the work of this kind of committee can actually be spread across the country. So I want to record my, my thanks for for, for the convener and the Bravery Awards Committee, Stanford, Slubbard and his team. And of course, the Director of Drowning Prevention who oversees this committee. Right. Um, I'm just uh, trying to look at my agenda because I can't read Helen's one on the screen. So just bear with me. Um, can we then move on to item 8.2? Okay, we have... Um, um, Congratulatory um, on. We need to congratulate the recipients of the Honours Award of Life Saving South Africa that was approved to uh, earlier in the National Council meeting, and we can announce very proudly that the uh, Honours Award uh, for the 2019-2020 has gone to Annalie Lawrence and Diane Creamer. Um, so, can I have a mover and a seconder? Um, for the ratification of the LSA Honours Award. Mover. Oh, move. Troy Brown. Sorry, Helen, you got to help me. I'm, my my connection is is getting a poor, is dipping at the moment. Do you capture the move in the seconder? Okay. Thank you very much. And um, can I, on behalf of the uh, National Council and the Management Board congratulate Anna Lee Lawrence and Diane Creamer. Can I say thank you? <laughs> yes, your, your, your thanks is acknowledged, yeah. Okay, um, can I then move on to item number just to get the, right, the Meritorious Service Award. And um, we have here item number 8.3. The National Council earlier today had um, ratified the 
meritorious awards of life saving South Africa uh, to the candidates that were nominated, and that's Mike Rubenheimer and Jane Lewis. So um, congratulations to the two recipients. And can I then ask for a, um, uh, a proposal and a seconder just to ratify that we have in fact uh, bestowed this meritorious award to the two uh, nominees that came through. Alan. Troy Brown. Alan, Alan um, proposes and Troy Brown seconds. And then could you just also uh, note your acceptance in the chat group at the bottom? Right. Um, Helen, just, yeah, instead of me toggling, can you just go remind us of the next item? Sorry, I'm, I mute myself. Um, okay. The ratification of honorary patrons and honorary vice patrons of Life Saving South Africa. And Julie, right. appoint. Yeah, proceed. Yeah. Just, and Julie, appoint the elected persons for the ensuing period until the next annual general meeting. Right. Um, so early this evening, we had. Um, um, we had um, ratified the, the patron, Her Serene Highness uh, Princess Charlene of Monaco, and the vice patrons. And together with that, we also uh, went on to ratify the honorary life membership of the list of names that you see there. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to read the names as I see them on my list here. Um, we've had um, Alan Pembroke, Leslie Brown, Derek Free, John Coyne, Yella Mainsma, Brian Sturman, and Graham Lewis. And it is a, an honor indeed to then announce to you that all of the names that you see from patron, vice patrons, and the honorary life membership was ratified in the National Council earlier on. So can I just have a proposal and a seconder in this meeting to accept all of these um, um, honorary, um, uh, sorry, these honors awards that have actually been um, accepted in the meeting? Is there a proposal? Troy. Dylan moves and Troy. Okay. All right. So congratulations. And uh, we will obviously communicate this officially to all of the members. Alan Pembroke is present here today. So congratulations, sir, on your uh, life membership as well. Chair, I just want to uh, thank the members of Life Saving South Africa for this honor. I assure you it is very much appreciated. Thanks very much. All right. And then um, uh, if I can ask the delegates present to also record your acceptance in the chat forum at the bottom. Okay. With that done, can I then move you on to item number 10? And, and this comes to uh, formal elections. And in the formal elections uh, section, we have um, election officers. I will just go through the... Um, um, the elections that we have in this particular section. Uh, we have elections of um, actually three management board positions, right? So what had actually transpired is that in terms of the, um, the tenure, there were two management board positions that became available due to the tenure having been completed. And there were nominations that you see listed there for those two positions. But in the National Council meeting earlier on, we, the National Council recorded the resignation of one of the management board members, and that was Tracy Bird. She had tendered a resignation to the management board meeting. And, uh, at the National Council, we had recorded the acceptance of her resignation. 
And in that process, the National Council had formalized the fact that there will now be three positions that become vacant. So there were two that had expired in terms of the tenure, one through a resignation. National Council also had accepted earlier on that in terms of the constitution with the number of, um, uh, with the number of nominees being available, that we should use this election um, to actually vote, not for the two positions, but for all three positions. So we have five nominations, but we can actually uh, uh, allow for the elections of three positions. Okay, so I hope I've, I've um, um, uh, expressed that clearly. So this particular um, uh, AGM will now vote for three names um, that will fill three vacant positions. I'm just going to ask Helen to again uh, reiterate the, the um, voting tools that you have available to you so that we can be very clear about what your actions are. And then um, the electoral offices that we've had that you will send to, that is Leslie Lan and Janelle Naidu, will be able to tally and check that the votes have been actually cast correctly in terms of the voting strength. Okay. Helen, uh, can you just... Thank you. Those people, those, everyone who has the right to vote, who has declared themselves in the meeting earlier, to please send a list of three names to Janelle Naidu and to Leslie Lunn. The three names being any three of the following, Marius Oosthuizen, Louise Erasmus, Grant Brietzke, Warren Prince, and Gerald de Jager. Um, while you are doing that and sending that through, um, Daya, if you want to, you can continue with some some other discussions, or we can move on to another point, if you like. I'd much prefer if, if I could just say, um, I can allow for at least a voting period of uh, maybe two minutes. I'd prefer to do that so there's no, no distraction and to ensure that they do it. So it's 8.31, we'll, I will reconvene at 8.33 just so that the members can actually cast their votes uh, uninterrupted. Okay. Sorry? Eight, no um, problem, it's not eight, it's 18. Eight, 18, 1833, sorry. Sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm... No problem, Daya. We're all tired. <laughs> we are all tired now. It's, it's seriously Absolutely. not a problem. Alan, will Leslie know what is the uh, weight of the vote, province, individuals? Yes. Helen, am I sharing again? Helen? Okay. Oh, Daya? Yeah. yeah, sorry. Uh, no, no, I, just check, I was just checking the screen. Uh, just give me a second, Warren. Uh, 
I've cleared. I thought I was interrupting Helen's sharing, but that's sorted out. Warren? Um, if you want to change your vote, how do you do that? You just send the, the other name and, uh, and resend the other one or what? That's a spoiled vote. Uh, yeah. Okay, no, 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 it's fine. Leave it. Covered. Okay. okay. Okay, I, I just want to check firstly whether everybody has managed to perform the actions in the chat group in terms of the, the tool that's available to submit to Leslie Lunn and to Janelle Naidu. If, think, if there's somebody that's just, you know, just give an indication if you need a minute. Or so. Everybody's coming through in the chat group saying they're done voting. Okay. Helen, you want to say something? I said everybody has come through on the chat group or is coming through on the chat group saying they are done with the voting. Okay, super. Right. Then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to then allow them to do the tally and the verification. Uh, and then if, if the meeting would allow that we actually proceed with the next uh, item, until such time we have a result of that voting process? Or would you rather prefer that we await the uh, outcome of the uh, tally of the votes? Proceed. I think let's wait, we proceed. otherwise we're going to confuse them. Sorry? I think let's wait, otherwise we are going to confuse them when other votes are coming up on their phones. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I think Z makes a good point because if they're supposed to be tracking the other votes, except that some of them are just, if I look at the next one, um, appointment of auditors, it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's not an election as such, it's more ratification. Yeah. Um, Daya, you have missed 10.1.2. Daya? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. Sorry, so um, yeah, carry on with the non voting items in the meantime. Yes, yes. I, I just want to suggest that, that, that we can actually um, uh, uh, continue with so that we actually save time because I'm sure they'll be able to. And then, Helen, you will laser them to see at what point they have the uh, result. Okay? All right. 10.1.2. 10.1.2. Is a finance committee uh, is is has a position, a vacant position for a uh, representative from the SAF, um, uh, from from the SAF uh, uh, provinces. So, can I see? Is there a nomination from the floor? I'm, I'm trying to just check where's the. Hands up. Um. There are no hands at the moment. I think what one so needs. Is... So we don't have any nominations. No nominations. Okay. Um, can we then be advised is that will this be referred back to the um, finance committee for them to co-opt somebody into the finance committee? If you are happy that will that this, is the way to Or will go? this be have to refer to a special general meeting? I'm assuming it will be the first option, refer back to the finance committee to uh, co-opt. Uh, Bruce is not here. Dylan, you want to just give us some advice on that? Um, Chair? Before you do that, um, I haven't actually spoken to him, but um, if Troy doesn't mind, I'd like to ask him, would his wife a dream consider moving into the, uh, the finance subcommittee? Okay, thank you for that, Alan. Um, 
it's, it's, it's good to put the members on the spot because we need all the expertise that we can actually get. So, um, Troy, Alan has proposed your name. Would you accept that nomination? No, no I've proposed his wife. Oh, sorry. Um, okay, I've just, I've just had a quick chat to Adrian. She said she will stand for it. Um, but I will, I will need to pass it through our provincial committee that they're happy she's standing to. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, heard you, Troy. We heard you, Troy. I'm going to bring uh, Dylan in. Yeah, just on a point of procedure, we as board members cannot uh, nominate this particular person. Um, the people that serve on the committee has to be nominated by the sub provinces and the, inland, or the coastal and inland provinces. It cannot come from the board. They're actually representing those two sets of stakeholders on the finance committee. So you as the president, you liaise with the chairman of the, of the provinces. We can suggest that there is someone available, but it has to come from them. Okay. I concur with Dylan. Thanks for the, yeah. Thanks for the clarification. Is it in yeah, also, we concur with the nomination. Okay, and, and thank you very much, Dylan. I knew I was picking on you to, 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 to point us in the right direction procedurally. So, so I think that is what we'll uh, uh, obtain for now, that um, we, we refer this back to the uh, provincial chairpersons and we will communicate there is, a, there is a, a, a proposed name and I think we would ask them to actually uh, uh, determine consensus and send that back to the, um, send that back to the, to the board. And how, uh, uh, Dalin, just help me, how would we then ratify that? Would that have to be via a postal vote or we just accept that if there's consensus with the sub provinces, that we accept that nomination to serve on the uh, finance committee. I'm yeah, asking. If the, yeah, if the sub provinces agree to the suggested person, then that person automatically will serve on the committee. Okay, thanks. And then we can just ratify that by some communique from head office. Thank you Correct. very much. I'm then going to proceed to the next item which is item number 11, the appointment of the auditors. And we have here um, the, the auditor who's been in existence, as Bruce has already um, in his report earlier today, um, had indicated his, uh, his confidence in the way that they have conducted the audits of our finances. And uh, the current auditor has confirmed the availability. So um, can I then ask, um, if we could confirm the auditors by having a proposer and a seconder. I propose, Dylan. Dylan proposes. second. Gert second. seconds that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, is there any other, is there any objections, any other proposal? I don't see any hands going up. Can I just also ask you then to, uh, for that particular item, also type up your acceptance in the chat uh, for Helen's record as well. You can just number it uh, and, and, and you can uh, type in your chat. Then can I move us on to, I think the, uh, on my document here, I see a slight typo. It should read, item 12, not 112. And here we have the honorary legal advisor and medical advisor. Um, we had received communication uh, from uh, Mike Nolan uh, of his, uh, you know, of, 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 of him not wanting to continue. And we had engaged with him and obviously had communicated our thanks to Mike, and that position has become available. We had the name of Marius, Advocate Marius Ustazen. I think we need to may just correct that it's Advocate Marius Ustazen. 
uh, senior counsel. Um, so I'll just take that one, 12.1 first. Is there a proposal and a seconder to accept that nomination for honorary legal advisor? Unanimous. Unanimous indeed. Yes. Okay. Second. Okay, then can I just, it'll be 12.1 in your chat um, to record your acceptance of 12.1, your acceptance. And then can I, can I have 12.2, the honorary medical advisor, we have a name of Dr. Mike Marshall, who's been a medical advisor. Um, so 12.2 to confirm the appointment of Dr. Mike Marshall, who has confirmed intention to continue with the appointment. Unanimous. <laughs> All right. I hope you're not taking a shortcut here, but I would expect you to also in the chat also record your acceptance for 12.2. And I'll wait for Helen to see whether she's actually receiving that. Sorry, I didn't catch who proposed and seconded 12.2. Z. Z proposed. Yes. And seconded. Island. Island. Okay, Annelies' hand is up. Uh, Annelies, um, you have a question or a comment or a, a, a counter proposal? Yeah, what I just want to know is will this not affect? Be, um, because we are voting uh, Marius either on the management board as well. I just want to make sure if um, this won't have an effect by being an honorary um, legal advisor or is it two different um, positions? Um, Unless from a uh, uh, very good question, it, it will affect... Sorry. Sorry, it, it will affect... Uh, and particularly, I, I can share this with you because if you listen in, in the earlier meeting, uh, Marius as well alluded to it, and he also indicated that he's accepted the the um, the, the nomination on the Saskoc Judicial Commission. So my understanding is, and from my discussion with him even earlier today, I can share that if Marius has already accepted the position on the Judicial Commission uh, on SASCO, then I do not think that Marius will be able to serve on the management board because the idea of serving, for example, on the Judicial Commission is usually somebody who's sort of, you know, was almost independent to the day-to-day -day running of the organization. I did, ex I did discuss it with Marius, but he says that because his nomination came through the uh, um, provincial structure for the management board position as well. Marius could not uh, simply, um, you know, uh, uh, withdraw his name. He, ha he had to accept that that name came through the, the, the um, provincial structure, GPLA nomination. In my view then, if Marius is elected onto the management board, and obviously now he's elected onto the, to, as the honorary legal advisor position, which has just been ratified a, a few minutes ago, then he would have to, in my view then, relinquish his position on the management board, and that position would then become vacant. Mm. I'm, gonna test my I'm just gonna test my understanding that, and I was gonna ask for, um, uh, um, advice from the elders in the movement and dylan has got his hand up. Okay, so Marius has previously served in both capacities. Um, when he was a board member, he also um, served as an honorary legal advisor. Um, so just for clarity also, the honorary legal advisor or advisors could be anyone with a legal background, legal qualification, that is willing on a voluntary basis to advise the organization legally. So it can be a board member, any other member, or even a non-member. So it doesn't conflict, the two roles don't conflict with each other. 
But Dylan, um, yeah, you're quite right. You, and and you, you've, you've just given us a history. But the fact that uh, uh, Marius has also uh, acknowledged that he's accepted the nomination, because you recall you were saying they're going through some briefings, etc. cetera. Um, how would that place his position on the management board? Can I, Can I come in? And Winston has uh, Winston and then Helen. Uh, thanks, uh, Chairperson. Uh, the SESCO constitution is very clear that if it comes to federation representation on its board, I first want to start there, then if you become a member of the board of SESCO, you must relinquish whatever other position you're sitting in within a federation. Similarly so, if you become a member of the Judiciary Council of SESCO, then you must relinquish your position. That's very clear. So if Marius comes in tonight, then obviously he must uh, excuse himself after that and we will have to co-opt someone in his position. All right, um, Helen. Okay, just from, from our constitution's point of view, it is not a conflict because any normal board member may serve in any other official capacity within our federation. They cannot be a director of a board, but they can serve as a in any honorary or any of other official capacity. But it, uh, it will have I, to it will have to be taken back to Marius, and he will have to review it. So if he if it clashes with his position in Sascock, um, then he will have to review that. But it does not a clash within our constitutional structure. If I may. The LSA Constitution is always subjected to the Constitution of SESCO. So we must just have that clarity in mind. So if the SESCO Constitution dictates that uh, he must excuse himself if he becomes a Judiciary Board member or a SESCO Board member, then we will have to follow suit. Absolutely, right. I agree with you. Okay, okay. So, so let's, let's just, um, uh, to answer just to confirm our response to, uh, to Anneli's question. So in, 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 in the current context of our constitution, Marius could serve as the honorary legal advisor as well as a board member. So that's, that's uh, uh, settled. I think we will then have to refer this matter to him in terms of his position in, um, oh, with his nomination to the SASCOP Judicial Commission. And we will then revert back to the movement uh, with a clear understanding of what that means, because you know it may turn out I, I don't know. Morris may decide to then rather relinquish his SASCOP nomination and 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 stay with Life Saving South Africa. So so as it stands at the moment, uh, Morris can actually serve as a board member as well as the, the honorary legal advisor. Are we all happy with that? Yes, thank you for that um, a clarification. My, just my next question, what I want to know is, if Marius resigned then, and um, do we take the, the, we have only voted for three people now, and um, do we take the fourth one that came out in the ranking as the person taking his place, just for uh, interesting sake? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Want me to respond? Yes, please, Darlin. You, I think you'd know that more closely than I would. Yeah, so um, in terms of discussions in the past with Marius, from the constitutional point of view, um, that once there's a vacancy after the AGM, it's the responsibility of the management board to go up um, someone to call that role. And the stance we've taken in the past is because we, especially when it's close to the AGM, um, because we just recently had the election, the next highest person will then fill the role. And it, but it's up to the board to decide that. So once the meeting, the agent is concluded, and if Marius resigns, the board will then make a call on whether we gain. But traditionally, we have gone with the next in line. Okay. Anli, are you happy? And, and, and certainly the management board will apply its mind in terms of what the provisions of the um, constitution is. So, so I think we can leave that for, um, you know, for whatever happens. If he resigns, then, then the management board actually deals with 
uh, with that as Dylan had explained. Thanks, I'm happy. Okay, great. Right, so, so I think then we've had some clarity about, um, about uh, uh, the, the, the position of one, the honorary legal advisor, as well as the, uh, the, the management board uh, position. Okay. Right, um, Helen. Uh, are we? We should. Can we proceed with item number thirteen, or do we have an outcome from the uh, electoral process? I've sent it to you. Oh, um, how have you sent a uh, fire? What's up? Oh, great. Okay. <laughs> It's called technology, sir. Technology. Yeah. Okay. So, with, with your permission, then, can I can I then um, read the outcome of the votes as it is being presented to me? So we're reverting back to item ten point one point one. Okay. Are you Yes, we yes. are. Right. So we, we, we're reverting um, um, to item 10.1.1, and we have the outcome as follows. The, in terms of the ranking, the person that was voted the highest was Marius Ustazen. The second highest was Warren Prince. The third highest was Louise Erasmus. And then the fourth was Gerald de Yaga. And then the fifth was Grant Rietzka. Okay. So in terms of the voting that I got here, the voting results, the management board members will be filled with Marius, Warren, and Louise. So I, I'm not too sure if we should allow for an applause or we should just record that the management board positions are Marius, Ustazen, Warren Prince, and Louise Erasmus. Congratulations to I, them. Yeah. I congratulate the uh, new management board members. I also um, would like to acknowledge the fact that uh, the other nominees, uh, Gerald and Grant, had put their hand up and, um, and, 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 and say better luck next time. But those are the duly elected management board members for the three positions. Right. Uh, do we have to get a proposal and a seconder to ratify those names? No, they've already been voted on. They've been voted on. It's, it's recorded in terms of the votes. So we can congratulate the three management board members that will join the 20, um, the management board for the next three years. Okay. Right. Um, yeah, normally it's, I, I, I do know that the, the functions on Zoom allows, the emojis do allow you to applause if you want to. Uh, I can't find it at the moment, but you can if you want to. Right. Oh, there's it. There it goes. Okay. Um, can, can we then say we move back along the, the, the agenda? And we go to item number 13, the convener of the disciplinary committee. And we have, um, we can note here, the convener of the disciplinary committee, advocate Martin Williams, um, still available and continuing that role. So this is for noting only, okay? Then in terms of representation on the uh, international bodies, we have, representation uh, in two categories. 
One is a representation on the uh, Royal Life Saving Society. And what you will read there is for item 14.1.1. 14 .1, and I'll go through a series of names. Um, and this is also for noting. It was, um, it was decided at the management board meeting in uh, January or February. And that is uh, yours truly, Mr. Dai Sudat on the President's Council, Mr. Dial and Tommy on the uh, Commonwealth Council Board of Trustees and Regional Capacity Development, Mrs. Helen Herbert on the Business Development Commission or Committee and Regional Capacity Development Workshops, uh, Mr. Alan Pembroke on the Honors Committee, and it's actually Dr. Colleen Capistano, who was uh, formerly Colleen uh, Saunders, on the Diploma Committee. Okay, so that is for noting. Then item 14.1.2 on the International Life Saving Federation. Uh, you have a series of names there, which is uh, Mr. Dial and Tommy, who will be Vice President of ILS Africa. Um, and by virtue of being ILS, uh, sorry, the Vice President on the ILS Africa Board uh, would have representation on the, um, the ILS. Mrs. Helen Herbert, who's, who's current incumbent on the ILS Board uh, and an ILS Board member. Uh, Mr. Yella Mainsma, who's the ILS Sport Commission uh, by virtue of his pe uh, position as Secretary. And then you have a name there, Dai Sudat, on the drowning prevention. But I just want to note, it's, it's, it's not a co-opted position, it's an observer position. Because the ILS board is, um, is already constituted with, um, I don't know, 13 or 15 members. So there's just observer status of, of that particular position. So uh, again, this is for noting 14.1. Uh can I come in here, Daya? Um, yes, uh, uh, Winston, you can come in. Uh, under uh, 14.1.2, um, I just have a, a question. Um, and it's purely from a constitutional point of view. So my query is about um, Dylan, Vice President of ILS. Shouldn't that be you then? so that you can have direct representation on the ILS. Okay. Um, Diane, can I so, Sorry, are you finished, Winston? Yes. Okay. Oh, to be honest with you, I, I haven't applied my mind. I've, I've acknowledged you. Um, yes, I've acknowledged you, Alan. I'm just wanting to quickly no, from a constitution. The members might not be aware, but Dylan knows that once you have been elected as a um, a vice president on I don't know, sorry ILS. So, sorry, I was thinking of um, RL SS because Dylan is now a vice president on RL SS. Um, having been president of Life Saving South Africa, and he retains that for as long as he lives. The same as when I was president way back in 2000, I was also elected as a vice president of the Commonwealth, and I still have that designation. It is still there. I don't lose that. Um, okay. Um, but yeah, but I, I think the point that Winston makes with uh, ILS, I'm not sure how that fits in because surely they also have an AGM. Maybe Helen can throw some light on this. Yeah, uh, I actually want to say I, I I I don't know what our constitution says or ILS. You know, when, when Winston asked the question directly, so I was actually going to open this out for, for um, someone who's in the know about how the representation. All I do know is that the ILS Africa board uh, elections, Helen, is, is, is uh, convening in February. 
that's correct. The way it yeah. yeah the way it works with the presidents with ILS is the person is elected to the position. The position that you hold in your um, home country or your home federation does not automatically give you the right to hold the position in ILS or ILS Africa. Um, unlike RLSS, where you have a president's council, ILS doesn't have that kind of a council. However, next year in 2021, ILS Africa elections will be taking place in February for members of the ILS board. Um, ILS, uh, I'll, 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 I'll um, defer to Dylan on this because he has a lot more experience and a lot more um, knowledge of this. But the being the president of the ILS Africa region, I, I can't remember how that comes about. Um, but the ILS Africa board members do not automatically sit um, as members of the ILS board. You only have a certain number of board members from each region that can be added to the ILS board and it is dependent on the number of countries that are represented in that region. So I'm going to defer to Dylan who can give more information on that. Okay, yeah, uh, but at least you confirmed that there's an election coming. So I was actually going to say um, there would have been a, this, there may have been or should have been a regional sort of a nomination, a Southern African or a whichever regional um, nomination that would go to the board. That would normally be the procedure. Would it not be so? Um, and maybe Dylan, as you say, could explain that. Okay. Um, you want to help us? Yeah. Yeah. So not to delay this meeting, um, I think Winston's question is a question that normally gets answered at board level. Um, at the board level, we'll decide. Um, who we want to nominate to ILS or Royal for that matter. And like Alan said, it's not automatically that the president, yes, the board may decide that that's preferential. But if you get elect elected, then it's a four year period, the same like ours. Mm. Um, and you can't just replace the person because your president locally has changed. So in our next board meeting, we're going to have to discuss who we want to nominate to serve on ILS and ILS Africa. Okay, that gives clarity. Thank you. Okay. All right. Th thank you very much for that, Darlin. Um, yeah, I, I think I think that's how um, how that will be managed. But I think for now we've noted the representation um, as as it is stipulated there. I just made a correction, and I think Helen can capture that. That um, it's 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 the. The ILS Drowning Prevention Commission is not a co-opted position, it's just an observer position, right? Okay, can we then move on to item number 15, 15.1, the blue flag. And here, there's a, an, there's a nomination of a name of Mr. Gordon Duvall, who served as the LA representative, Life Saving South Africa representative on the blue flag jury committee. And this is for noting only. Right, so, so I think we've covered up to item number 15. Then we've gone on to our annual awards and under item number 16, annual awards, uh, for the various awards that you see here, um, I'm, I was, is, is, is um, uh, Craig with us? Yes, uh, yes I am, Dyer. Yeah. Could I, I, could I just ask you to speak to these items before we action anything? I know, um, just to give the, some background here. Okay, well, the, out of the sporting awards, we did take the decision um, this morning that, or, or the sports board uh, made the decision, which we ratified at National Council this morning, that none of the actual sporting awards would be handed out. Um, due to the fact that the criteria hasn't been met. Um, the criteria includes uh, results from your uh, surf and pool national championships, as well as um, uh, interprovincials. And neither of the events went ahead this year, so we cannot issue those awards, unfortunately. Right. 
So, so Helen, you didn't help me with the uh, remainder of the awards. Um, if we, um, if we can take out the, the sports awards, okay? Do you have uh, the list of names to project or you want me to call that up, announce it from my side? Is it not on the screen already? Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at two screens because I couldn't see yours, right? Okay, um, the long service awards, it's a yeah. little bit different when you don't have a, a have a, an, an awards dinner. Um, yeah. so we, we congratulate everybody who is on this list. So long service awards for serving Life Saving South Africa for 25 years or more, uh, been awarded to Luke Nisbet from Pri Pirates. Um, and to Robin Solomon from Landudno for serving Life Saving South Africa for 50 years, which I think is an awesome achievement. Absolutely. And our congratulations go to the two uh, recipients in that category. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Um, as, as we awarded earlier, the Honours Service Awards and the Meritorious Service Awards, the certificates and um, badges will be forwarded to Anneli Lawrence for Honours and Diane Kramer for Honours from Gauteng and Western Cape, and the Meritorious Service Awards to Mike Robenheimer from KZN and Jane Lewis from Western Cape. So congratulations okay. to them. And our congratulations go to the recipients in, in that category. Right. Um, we, we have got an explanation about the sports award, so we're going to skip that. Okay, then right. we get to the patrols awards. Okay, um, the, this is awarded to the lifesaver with the most duty hours, either surf or still water. And the surf patroller of the year goes to Sibu Sisu and Congo from Pirates um, with 562 hours. And right. the... And up our congratulations will go to Sibasiso in Congo. Yep. And I'm sure we're way to actually honor that. Uh, just a comment, if you look at the number of hours and you had to translate that, that to an R value, you can imagine what one person would have contributed in what I illustrated earlier on in terms of the RAND value contribution we made. So a big congratulations to Sibasiso. Yeah. Um, they still would have patrolled. Proceed, Helen. The Stillwater Patroller of the Year um, is Kyle Carbonell taylor from Hearty's Reflection. This is his second year of winning it um, with 240 hours and 240 and three quarter hours of duty. Well done, Kyle. And, uh, and our congratulations. Well done, yeah. Congratulations from, from um, uh, the, the president as well as the management board to Carl and I'm sure Jennifer will find some way to honor it and maybe if there's an opportunity to come over and hand it over like to Sibasiso uh, and other recipients um, just for a photo shoot or something we'll need to work on that as the lockdown eases so we can actually honor the recipients of these awards okay proceed Helen Okay, the instructor of the year is awarded to the instructor with the most successful candidates, so it's actually the most number of successful candidates during the financial year. Um, and this year it's awarded to, to Tegan Thompson from Clifton Surf Life Saving Club. Hmm. Okay, and again, uh, congratulations are extended to a recipient, Tegan Thompson, um, on and, and, and quite an achievement because it, like everybody else, it's hard work and I can imagine what the instructors go through. So big congratulations. Okay. The uh, medical safety trophies, both for surf and for still water, um, are awarded to the provinces with the most examinations um, done. And the surf award this year goes to Life Saving Western Cape. Congratulations. She said, um, but unfortunately, we, we cannot hand you your trophy, but <laughs> congratulations, uh, uh, respect to Life Saving Western Cape, Kauteng. Yeah. Um, 
Gauteng Provincial Life Saving Association won the Stillwater one. Okay, Helen, could you just bring up the screen here? Okay, the Bravo Van Heerden Trophy is awarded to the um, club with the best drowning prevention initiative. This year we did not have any clubs with drowning prevention initiatives that submitted any programs. Um, it could just be that it is a um, COVID issue, but um, it's, it's, we, we didn't have any, so it's not awarded. Uh, Helen, you may have to go back um, after you've done the medical safety. We, we've got that part. You may have to repeat all the other things that you were saying because your your mic uh, your connectivity. Okay. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, clearly. Okay, I'm saying the Bravo for Hayden Trophy. We had no clubs with um, any drowning prevention initi initiatives that were submitted to head office for verification. So it is not awarded. Then we have okay. the award from the from head office. This is this is head office's staff award. Um, and they award this to the district or province with the best administration. This is looked at in a view of who answers emails quickly, who who replies to queries, who gets communication from their provinces. And this year it was um, awarded to Lifesaving KZN. Uh, big congratulations, uh, Lifesaving KZN. So Detroit, Leslie. And Leslie here. Um, I think it's a deserving award. And uh, that that's a, must become a... It must become a, a, a norm, but we congratulate you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Helen, can you okay. proceed? Yeah. The Daphne Nell Trophy is um, awarded to the province that has shown the highest percentage, percentage growth in membership. And this year it goes to Life Saving Eastern Cape. Oh, congratulations, Life Saving Eastern Cape. Um, to Earl and your team, um, there's a huge turnaround in Eastern Cape from what we know that happened in the last few years. And it's not just turning around the, the, the administration of the province, but you've actually shown significant growth. So a big congratulations from uh, Life Saving South Africa and the management board. Uh, we really honor your, your efforts. Okay, the Life Saver of the Year, um, goes to Tove from Sale from Tux. This is um, awarded to the individual who um, is involved in various areas. It's not just a competitor, they're not just a duty patroller, but they are involved in instruction or they are involved in committees um, and that is awarded to Tove. Okay, thank you, Helen. You can just um, um, uh, move your... Um... I don't want to. I will move okay. my thing up in a moment. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, but but uh, 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 Gauteng Life Saving is here, and we hope you convey the congratulations from uh, Life Saving South Africa and the management board. And, and has, as we had indicated, if there's an opportunity for us to do um, some, some handover, uh, we'll certainly, I, I, I certainly would like, like to be there to actually do that. So please convey our congratulations to Tove van Zell. Um, this is a, a, a quite an achievement as well. Thanks, Helen? Daya. I will definitely do that. She will be very happy for that. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Great. Then we we have um, the Club of the Year, uh, and that this year is awarded to Summer Strand Surf Life Saving Club from Eastern Cape. A big congratulations again to uh, Life Saving Eastern Cape. You're really racking up the awards, uh, uh, some of the big awards. So that's that's uh, fantastic. And uh, Earl, please convey our, our our congratulations to Summerstrand, and we'll find some way of actually honouring as well. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, thank you guys. Thank you.
Yeah. Pleasure. I just want to uh, I share for the for the. For I just the, um. Can I just interrupt? Sure. Can I just, my, my, as you know, my wife is on PE, so she's jumping up and down here for Summer Strand and Life Saving Eastern Cape. So, so you got okay. a fan on this side. Oh. <laughs> okay. My apologies. I just would like to share with with everybody how the calculations go for the club of the year so that you can actually see it's very small i'm sorry um, but that you can actually see what goes into uh, the calculations so the number of monthly so there's a whole array that goes into working out who's the club of the year there's administration from monthly returns irb returns duty reports participation uh, in competition in this year was those who entered na the nationals, although they did not participate in it. Um, those who, who did awards and how many awards they did. And then the growth in membership and the last column is their transformation. How many female members and how many members of color um, they have in their clubs. So that is uh, the calculations that go into the the con, uh, working out who wins the club of the year. It's not awarded to the club we think is the club of the year. It's there is a um, calculation base behind it. Thank you very much, Helen. I'm, I'm glad you sharing from your side and going through the honors, the, the, on, the role of honors, because uh, I wouldn't have been able to express that from my end. Um, I think you having the information and being able to share that is pretty useful. So I appreciate that. And that indeed is quite a rigorous uh, sort of uh, process to go through all of the criteria. Thank you. Um, I thank so my on. staff at head office because they spend days counting papers. <laughs> okay. so I really uh, do. Um, okay. okay. The, the next... Carry on. Item on the um, awards is the Honorary Life Membership, which was awarded earlier to Alan Pembroke, Leslie Donald, Derek Furry, John Coyne, Yella Mainsma, Brian Sturman, and Graham Lewis. Okay. Um, and then the final um, award is your one, Dyer. Okay. President's um, award. And, uh, we, we, we had recognized, um, we had recognized um, uh, Alan uh, in this meeting, uh, but I think we must find somewhere, like we've done with the PowerPoint presentation, uh, if we can find some way of actually um, uh, honoring all of the life members, because as Alan said himself, it, it, it is quite an honor. Uh, Helen, you took out that, uh, that particular uh, I did, because it's the, it's the President's Award, and that's you going to speak to it. Okay. Is, is, is that the one that Janelle sent to me? Can I just yes. uh, try and call this? Okay, whilst I'm trying to call that up, um, um, you, you don't have a copy of that, Helen? I do. Um, I, I will gladly read the names, but you need to give an explanation of okay. who you're awarding it to. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to, I'm just going to give a background to the award. And then I'm going to ask Helen to actually read the names because I don't want to hold you up with a screen sharing function that may be problematic from my side. So the, the, the 20, um, as you know, the President's Award is normally awarded on the discretion of the President. And uh, this could be any, any particular award that uh, the President may, may, may feel as a deserving candidate in terms of maybe uh, drowning prevention, or in terms of uh, sport medals achieved. Um, so so it's, it's, it's fairly wide ranging um, in terms of what the, the, the um, uh, president determines as an award. Sorry, I was just being distracted on one side. I'm just going to get back to what I was saying. So for the 2019 and 2020, um, I've used my prerogative to uh, determine that the president's award is going to go to the entire local organizing committee and the volunteers for the World Conference on Drowning Prevention 2019. So I wish I could uh, give you an applause to every, each and every one of you 
But if you listen to my report, my report had highlighted the hard work that had been put in for the uh, local organizing committee that spent over two years in actually organizing that conference. And then together with the local organizing committee, there was a whole list of names that you will see that will be projected in terms of the volunteers that also uh, assisted in the run-up to the conference and during the conference itself. So I've asked the head office to actually compile a list of names because I believe that each and every one of them were a deserving candidate for a mammoth project that took endless hours and sleepless nights and long hours of day and into the night to actually make sure that the World Conference on Drowning Prevention was a highly successful event. Um, and um, by all accounts, from the reviews and the surveys that we got back, that the delegates in the main had a fantastic delegate experience uh, before the conference, during the conference, and our VIP guests, and including the ILS uh, dignitaries that were uh, present for the pre-conference meetings, um, their feedback that they got was uh, that they all rated the event itself very, very positive. So I declared that the 2019-2020 goes to the LOC members as well as the volunteers, and I'll ask Helen to call up the names. Okay, Thank so you. I think it was listed um, alphabetically. So it's Anneli Lawrence from Tux, Bridget van Amarva from Blue Water Bay, Charles Kumala from Ciandisa Academy, Colleen Capistano from LOC member, Western Cape, Cynthia Mainsma, LOC member, KZN, Dean Ahmad from Pirates, Dion Woodley, um, LOC member, Daya Sudith, from, an LOC member, Dot Libertrow from Warner Dune Surf Life Saving Club, Heather, Heather Morris Eaton, the um, HP director, um, myself as an LOC member, Yella Mainsma as an LOC member, Jessica Erasmus, an LOC member, John Mosime from Sima Academy in Limpopo, um, Kulekane Sosibo from Siandisa Academy, Kyle Carbonell Taylor from Hearty's Reflection, who had a ball, um, Leslie Lunn from KZN, Louise Erasmus, LOC member, Lucky Blamini from Siandisa Academy, Luyanda Gaza from OR Tambo, Marlon Lowe, and, um, I think we're going to remove him. He, they didn't, he didn't arrive. Um, Martina van den Boot um, from Aqua Martina, Michaela Hendricks from SEMA Academy, um, Mogal Chuene from SEMA Academy, Mzi Mayedwa from an a, a LOC member, Nongtrebo Gumede, Siandisa Academy, Kat Wilcox from Ellis Park Life Saving Club, Peter Slubbett from Summer Strand, Pumlani Maluleka from Siandisa Academy, Rebecca Sindel, LOC member, Riches Ndiata from Oatambo District, uh, Robin Erasmus unfortunately did not arrive, um, Sheldon Rue from KZN, Stanford Slubbett, the LOC member and the project manager, uh, Tami Majima from Siandisa Academy, Tanya Banda from Sime Academy, Tracy Baird, from, uh, LOC member, um, Tehala, sorry, excuse my pronunciation. Settler, Settler. Um, Zanele from Sime Academy, Valencia Walker from Tux, uh, Warren Prince as an LOC member, and Willem van Amarva from Blue Water Bay. Okay. Um, Helen, can I just also, I think I may have been remiss to uh, uh, include the names. Could we also add uh, Raul Petit and... Um, and, yeah. Uh, Raul uh, what was and, his name? And Sa Mr. Shabalala. Sandile. Yeah, Shabalala. Okay. We will do uh, I'm sorry I didn't, uh, I didn't pick that up, but they were fantastic um, uh, 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 part of Yella's team. Uh, shutting the delegates and the VIPs up and down and doing a whole lot of other things. Sandile Shabalala. So we just recognize this entire list. So I don't know if this is, this may be unprecedented in, uh, in life-saving South Africa to have 
so many recipients of a particular award, but I think it's worthwhile uh, uh, honoring each and every one of them um, because of the effort and the hard work and the long days and nights that they have put in. So uh, that is the President's Award. Which brings us to point um, number 17. Yeah. The closure of the meeting. Okay, great. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, once again, Helen, I must thank you for, for, for navigating through your, um, through, through your agenda. Otherwise, I, I've got these notes on this side, which would have been a problem, but I think we've done a fantastic job to go through the role of honors for all the awardees. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of those things that we uh, may still have to get used to if this is going to be the new norm going forward. Uh, I know the universities are already battling how do they do these, these virtual graduations because everybody when they finish the degree, they, they want to walk on the stage and they want to wear their cap and have everybody shout to them, etc. and congratulate them. And we are now also grappling with how do we honor, uh, how do we honor all of the recipients. But uh, I think I see Troy's uh, hand is up, Dyer. Yeah, I, I, I've acknowledged that. And I think we will find some way of actually doing that. And um, um, before we move to uh, closure, I'm just going to uh, uh, give an opportunity to, to those who want to have uh, some last comments. But I'm not going to go around the table because that's going to take uh, much longer. Troy, I've acknowledged your hand. I'm just looking to see if there's any other. Please go. Please proceed. Sorry, I've just received a message from Mike Robenheimer from the Far East, asking me please to extend his thanks. Very honored, please pass on my gratitude and thanks to everybody. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that, Troy. At least, at, at least we, we're recording in almost real time uh, the acknowledgement from uh, Mike Robenheimer himself and thank you for, for actually conveying that. So. To technology has some benefits that it can get across time zones and long distances very quickly. So thank you for that as well. Okay, can I just, in, before we move to closure and adjourn this meeting, can I just check if there's anybody else wants to make a final comment? Mr. Chairman, good evening. <laughs> yes. Um, is, um, is, is Melvin. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, from yes. my side, I would like to uh, say to you and your team, well done for a difficult season that uh, we went through. But we we battled, but we got through. To Alan and our office staff on a job, well done for your support. If we need anything or anything, we can just pick up the phone and dial yourself or Alan and you so always available maybe you people should should get a club of the year but guys to yourselves well done to your teams and i salute you thank you very much thank, thank you melvin for for moving a vote of thanks from the floor or from 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 the management board side um i'm not seeing any other hands going up and i don't want to keep you any longer uh, but I think for today, I would just want to express my heartfelt thanks to each and every one of you for bearing with us. This is probably the first time we're doing such a, you know, a, a full meeting. Um, I recall back in the day, we used to start uh, AGM and National Council on a Friday evening and go the whole Saturday and even Sunday. And by the time uh, delegates had to leave to the airport, we were still, we still hadn't finished. So, so I think this is a, a huge uh, improvement, and we were currently uh, we currently um, uh, are running our first AGM on on the virtual platform, and I think we've done fairly well to cover all of our items. And from my side, I want to again thank you all. Uh, please convey our thanks to your provinces and the clubs and the members as we had reflected on the presentations, and I'm sure these presentations will be available for you to actually share that with your members on the ground, because without the, the members doing duty, 
and your hardworking uh, uh, provincial and club leadership, uh, we wouldn't have an organization. So I want to, uh, I want to again also um, uh, thank you for your patience and, and for accommodating us with the delays, but I think we've done fairly well and we've successfully completed the AGM and the National Council today. Um, and with that in mind, I'm going to ask if we can then close the meeting and then allow you to enjoy what's left of your evening and, and, and your dinner. It's a pity we couldn't treat you to a gala dinner like we traditionally did, but uh, our finances wouldn't allow it and the current conditions would also not allow it at this point. So thank you very much. And I believe that you should now go and enjoy a well-earned rest and dinner with your family. If I, can just, if I can ask you, just Point sign two. off on the chat line, please, so that we know who was here at the end. Okay, Thank you yes. very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Yes. Bye. 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 Please, please, sign off. please sign off on the chat. So, so that's a record for Helen's purposes. You can sign off. I wanted to ask the management board members to stay on for a few minutes, but I'm not going to do that. I'm sure we can organize ourselves for when that next meeting is. So again, uh, on behalf of myself to the management board and the head office staff, uh, Helen and your team, Janelle, and all of them that actually uh, perform in the back end, uh, please convey our heartfelt thanks. And this meeting is now closed. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Here's all.